What gives one country the right to hold on to the art and cultural artifacts of another country? This practice is not a new thing. Powerful nations throughout history have taken the best of what smaller, developing nations have to offer and kept it for its cultural, artistic or scientific value. Items that have been taken from a foreign country become a point of curiosity or wonder as they are housed in museums and scientific facilities far away from their country of origin. Recently, however, history was made when Scotland returned a rare specimen of an important animal which they had taken from the Caribbean. The Hunterian Museum, which is located at the University of Glasgow in Scotland, contains biological specimens of animals from every continent. Since 1888, this preserved animal specimen had been kept at this university. What was the animal? And why was it suddenly returned after so many years of being held by Scotland? Let's find out. This animal is a large reptile known as the Jamaican giant gallywasp. Scientifically known as Celestus oxiduus, it is a fascinating creature. It is a large intimidating lizard known for its elongated body and smooth shiny scales. It is endemic to the small Caribbean island of Jamaica, meaning that it originates from there, with the Caribbean area as its natural home. The African descended population of the island, over a certain age, are very familiar with the galley wasp. It is famous for its speed and ferocity. The galley wasp was believed to be extinct due to the fact that during the colonial era, British settlers introduced the Indian mongoose to the island in an effort to control the rodent population. However, the introduction of the mongoose upset the ecosystem, as the mongoose became a relentless predator for many of the animals that were naturally found on the island. The introduction of the mongoose led to the extinction of multiple native species, one of which was the Jamaican giant galley wasp. So then, you might ask, how did a preserved Jamaican giant galley wasp end up in Scotland in the 1800s? Well, during the 1800s, and the centuries leading up to it, it was common for European naturalists and researchers to borrow or collect specimens from different colonies across the world for study or display in their home countries. They framed it as something that provided intellectual benefits, cultural benefits, and scientific understanding. While this may be true, it should also be mentioned that this kind of activity brings with it a certain prestige, if you will. It builds credibility for someone to be known as a biologist or scientist who is so deeply into their field that they possess preserved specimens of rare animals. It is used to signal a deep interest in the field of naturalism and elevate the status of the person or the institution that is preserving and keeping the specimen. In other words, it benefits the status of the person who takes it in more ways than one. There is great incentive for powerful people and institutions to possess scientifically and culturally significant materials taken from other nations. It is a common occurrence that is taken for granted and is guaranteed to spark sharp debates back and forth about whether it is moral or immoral, right or wrong. Once it arrived at the University of Scotland, it was put on display at the Hunterian Museum. There it remained, on display, alongside skeletons and species from the deepest parts of many nations. It seemed the world had all but forgotten about the Jamaican giant galley wasp specimen, which had been taken to Scotland. However, 170 years later, this all changed. On July 31, 2019, a historic international agreement that included reparations was revealed. This agreement was signed between the University of Glasgow and the University of the West Indies. It was designed as a tool for restitution. You see, the University of Glasgow was one of the main leaders in the efforts to abolish the slave trade. However, in recent years, they also acknowledged that they had received a great amount of financial support from people whose wealth was made from the enslavement of Africans. As a result, a reparation strategy was put forward. Among other things, it includes the University of Glasgow spending over £20 million over the next 20 years. 
for things like research, grants, and seed funding for initiatives at the University of the West Indies. One of the many initiatives agreed to under this reparation strategy was the agreement to return the 170-year-old animal specimen from the museum at the University of Glasgow back to its rightful home in Kingston, Jamaica. In April 2024, a team of experts traveled to Scotland to oversee the return of the important cultural artifact. The young adult female, wet preserved lizard, nicknamed Celeste, is believed to be over 170 years old. She had resided at the Hunterian Museum at the University of Glasgow since 1888. Regardless of how you feel about reparations, the return of native artifacts is an often overlooked part of the sovereignty of African peoples across the world. Sovereign peoples, first and foremost, are marked by the fact that they govern their own artifacts, make their own rules, and plant the seeds of their own destiny. This is not just a matter of the return of an artifact. It is an indication of the increasing levels of responsibility that African and African-descended nations are taking in the world as their status and economic potential rise to meet their rightful place on the world stage. It's a marker of maturity. Only the mature can take on the demanding responsibility of maintaining cultural and historical artifacts and expending the necessary resources to tell their own stories about their history. Seen this way, this is a success story. The repatriation of the Jamaican galley wasp is a symbol of reclaiming our heritage, a powerful statement that we are capable of preserving our past and using it to shape our future. It's a declaration that we are no longer willing to let others define our history or control the narrative of our culture. Instead, we are asserting our right to our own stories, our own treasures, and our own identities. The return of the Gala Wasp is not just about bringing a lizard back to its homeland. It is about bringing a piece of culture back where it belongs.